Hello, welcome back to my studio. In this video, I'm going to be covering two things. One, scraping off your painting to get a fresh start. And two, how to take the painting forward to create a sun filled and beautiful little village scene. Stick around and watch how this painting develops and get some tips for your next painting. Now in this painting I did a lesson for one of my coaching students and this meant going back and forth with testing out different techniques and so on. So the painting was kind of disjointed. I wanted to make a fresh start so I could complete the painting and the best thing to do in that case in my view is scrape part of it off or even the entire painting. So I did just that and left a nice impression on the piece of paper I was working on and worked over that in an alla prima fashion just from start to finish using that foundation that was already on the paper. So this technique is very useful because sometimes you just have to get all that wet paint off but still the surface remains slightly wet so it takes on fresh paint very easily and you're still getting some momentum from your first effort. So if you find you've lost your way, consider scraping a part off or the entire thing and just learn from your mistakes and carry on. Now let's see how this painting worked out and uh, see if you can get some tips for your next painting as well. Right, I've scraped off an underpainting with oils and it's left this impression on the paper. And I'm going to go over this now and get the layers of color that I want. Using a big number eight bristle brush, a bit of yellow ochre, yellow lemon and titanium white, getting the bright side of the building. And I'm going to try and build up all of these shapes over the, the impression I've got on the paper already in a very loose uh, fashion. I don't want a tight detailed color on here or shapes. So using quite a bit of paint and a bigger brush just helping to get these first bits of coloring. And I'll finish off the painting with the water. That's the sort of main feature I'm, I'm demonstrating, but all of the surrounding elements are important. I still want the painting to look like a, a little uh, English house and, and get all the foliage and that at least um, somewhat described, but without going into any strong detail. Swapped over to a number four bristle brush now just for these smaller shapes. Just a reminder on the palette I'm using titanium white, ultramarine blue, cerulean blue, Cadmium Deep Yellow, Cadmium Yellow Lemon, Cadmium Orange and Cadmium Red Light, Alizarin Crimson, Burnt Sienna and Yellow Ochre. I've added a color that I don't typically use for these type of scenes, but I've added some Thalo Blue, which I'm going to bring in towards the end of the painting to get some deeper blue or transparent blues in the foreground. So getting these blue, green and yellow color notes, all trying to use the colors fairly simply um, big shapes, uh, relatively big shapes. 
and I'm counting on the shapes pulling together to describe the scene. The house and the foliage around it are fairly high key, so the values are all pretty much on the light side of the value family. It's because everything is getting a fairly um, equal amount of light. The shadows are just on the right hand side in those trees and, and bushes. And of course in the foreground in the water it gets a bit darker there. But for the rest it's very much in a lot of light so it's going to look fairly high key. using the sky shapes to cut in and help describe the, the roof and the chimneys a bit better. So this is just cerulean blue and white. But there's a little bit of other colors coming into it as well. A little bit of green here or there. All helps with the harmony of color. Those autumn trees trying to just suggest a sort of a blurred shape, soft edges. And then go over that with a few lines to suggest uh, tree trunks. Just keeping it very simple. Light ones and a few dark ones as well. The few dark shapes that are in this scene are very helpful. They do add some structure and strength to it. Just a few dark lines at the base of these shapes, as you will see, will do a lot to help with the composition, strength of the, the shapes as they pull together and also to direct the eye.
Reflections, I try to make those with vertical strokes and then cut into them with some horizontal strokes which will suggest the movement of the water. I've just got to lighten that yellow up just a little more. But I'm just getting placement of where I want reflections. Let's get these dark edges in place early on and then start the water colors. So with a scene like this, you've got to be guided by your subject or reference, but don't let it completely dominate your, your thinking. Otherwise, you can spend a long time painting and repainting details. So all I'm looking for is a suggestion of a color. Here I've got a bit of orange light coming through, reflecting into the water. Put that in, but uh, adapt it as I go along. Make sure it's not dominating the the scene of the the or the water in the stream with way too many colors. You got to try and just consolidate it a little and simplify. Most of the stream is fairly dark blues and that's why I brought in the thalo blue as well which I'll add in in the final layer. At the moment there's lots of distinctive brush strokes in the water and that's making it a little too busy but as I soften those edges and blend a few of those edges one into the other that effect will disappear and the stream will be a little calmer and flatter. But it's not a perfect uh, mill pond as it were either so there is movement in the water and I don't want it to be as flat as glass. There must be something happening. So it's just a fine balance between suggesting some movement and getting that calm surface established as well. Bit of that orange roof reflecting, of course all reflections are weaker in the water, so whatever you is showing up and as a reflection is going to be weaker than the original object or color of course. Lights will reflect a bit darker and weaker and darks will appear a little lighter and also weaker which I really mean softer edged and the colors will be a lot more desaturated and soft. The lights in the water I'm using a bit of a violet color, a little bit of alizarin and blue
Now, there are no major highlights on the, the water surface. It's fairly subtle. However, I am going to drop in a few. Those that look a little too obvious, I'll blend away or get rid of. But it does help to create the illusion of water and uh, you know, what we're really doing is creating an illusion that must be believable. And uh, I think you expect to see a few little sparkles of light. It doesn't do any harm. And uh, those are just improvisations we use as artists to help carry off the painting. Just giving a little sense of finish to some of those details, still keeping them nice and loose though. So as far as the middle part of the water is concerned, I'm quite happy with that. I think the foreground, I am going to still darken that up a little more. For now, I'm just getting some of those final elements suggestion of grasses and twigs or what have you just to break up some shapes a little softening this edge Now I've got a bit of that thalo blue, touch of alizarin and white. And I want to simplify this foreground, get a nice sort of sweet blues and slightly violet shades in there. These colors of course work very nicely because there's a lot of yellow in the scene and of course purples and violets help to accentuate those colors so it's going to add a general vibrance and sparkle to the entire scene Showing the ripples as distinct shapes, just carving out a few of those white areas to bring a bit more color. Well, besides a few little fine tuning here or there, I think I'm fairly happy with how this has turned out. You can paint water scenes like this for ages, trying to get it just perfect, but just commit to an idea. And when you've described that idea sufficiently, then the painting is done. Don't want to overwork it. Just a few parting shots and then sign that off. 
I get the tape off and have a look and probably add a couple of little spots of light here or there but overall I think the effect of a lightful little sunny English scene has been achieved and uh, I've enjoyed fixing this little scene up and uh, we'll have a look at the final result. I hope you enjoy that little demonstration. There's plenty of things in there that you can get out of to apply to your own painting style. So watch the video again if you have to and just see what you can use for your next work. Remember there's also a free course available for you. Look for it in the description or up here as well. There's a link to a free course. And don't forget subscribe hit notifications and you won't miss the next video. Until next time, happy painting and cheers for now. Mm -hmm.